Jen Shu asks Ye Yang, why are you so insistent on having me conduct your interview? He replies, because I like you and your eloquence. By being the subject of your interview, you have the chance to understand me deeply, and perhaps you'll come to like me too. She says, Ye Yang, you're really straightforward, but we're not a good match. Ye Yang says, is it because you already have a boyfriend that you're saying this? She replies, why would you say that? He explains, when I confessed my feelings for you, you immediately rejected me without any hesitation. That indicates there must be someone in your heart already, which is why you wouldn't consider someone else. However, it's okay. Take on this interview, get to know me, compare me with him, and then make the best choice. What do you think? Jen Shuyi responds, I do have a boyfriend, and he's excellent. We won't break up. Ye Yang smiles and says, you're afraid of comparison because he's not as outstanding as I am. She replies, liking someone doesn't require comparison, and I'm not afraid of it either. Ye Yang, your interview is indeed valuable. I will seriously consider it. Ye Yang says, I'll be waiting for your news. Ye Yang, upon leaving the magazine office, the chief editor says to him, no matter who conducts your interview, it will be a high-quality piece. He responds, thank you. I certainly trust reporter Zheng's skills. Chen Shuyi entered the editor-in-chief's office, and the chief editor asked her if she had taken over the interview with Ye Yang. She didn't answer. The chief editor asked her again, what are you thinking? Giving up such an opportunity doesn't seem like your style, does it? She replied, I do have some concerns. He is pursuing me under the guise of a commissioned article. The chief editor said, you're beautiful, and your writing is excellent. It's normal for him to find you attractive. She said, I won't let love affect my career, but I won't sacrifice love for the sake of my career either. The editor-in-chief showed her the latest information about Ye Yang, saying that since the live press conference, his popularity index has remained high. This is a great opportunity for the upgrade of your digital magazine. She replied, I understand, but I need some time to discuss it with the most important person in my life. The editor-in-chief said, All right, take your time to discuss it thoroughly. After Chen Shuyi left, the editor-in-chief called her boyfriend, Guang Xiangqing, and said, Just now, I heard Shuyi say she won't sacrifice love for her career. I feel really sorry for you because of my job. Our relationship always seems to be hiding. Guan replied, It's okay, our relationship is the most important thing. Chen Shuyi walked in silence with Xi'an, who glanced at her and asked, Have you become more reserved? She replied that she had always been reserved and shy. As she stumbled a bit, he quickly held her and asked, Why aren't you careful when walking? She answered, I'm thinking about work. He said, So in reporter Zheng's heart, work is much more important than a boyfriend. She told him that Ye Yang from Black Horse had approached her for a commissioned article and actively requested to publish his interview in the digital magazine. He said, isn't that great? Your New Year's wish has come true. She said, but he is pursuing me through this. I told him I already have a boyfriend, but he insists that I get to know him first, compare him with you, and then make a decision. I'm really conflicted now. I want to do his interview, but I don't want to create trouble for our relationship. She teased, so, when reporter Zhang went on a date with me, she was actually thinking about other men. She joked back, you actually noticed. He became more serious and said, regardless of what decision you make, I'll support you. How do you know that after interviewing Ye Yang, you won't like me even more and choose me more firmly? She replied, you're right. Even if I interview a hundred Ye Yangs, I would still choose Xi'an. He said, Shi Yi, you're so wonderful, so outstanding. Many people would have thoughts about you. If we try to fend off everyone who approaches, just relying on your refusals, it's not a smart strategy. She stopped him and said, this is the first time you've praised me like this. I have to record it. She took out her phone and opened the recording app. He continued. When you're focused on your work, you radiate a dazzling light. It's precisely that radiance that attracted me. She said, okay, then I've decided to interview Ye Yang on Friday. Our original plan to gather in Fukin will have to be abandoned. 
He replied, You can allocate your work time to Yi Yang, but your personal time belongs to me. Shan Shan requested to attend the CHIP conference in Fukin, and her supervisor said, Weren't you unwilling to participate in such interviews before? Is this time to visit your boyfriend? She replied, Come on, I can't stay at the office forever, can I? The supervisor said, Why have you suddenly become so cooperative? All right, go ahead. Kishio left a voice message on her phone, I have the best renovation team, I can help you arrange for a door installation. Chen Shuyi asked her, Xiaoyu, who are you helping to install a door? She replied, Helping Professor Yu. Zheng asked, After you and Yu Yu finished watching the exhibition that day, did you do anything else? She said, We went to see a movie. Zheng inquired, Did anything happen between you two that day? She replied, I had such bad luck that day. I suggested going to his place, and he said he didn't even have a door. So, I'm helping him arrange for a door installation. Chen Shuyi suppressed a laugh and thought to herself, Shan Shan calls me the love assassin, but this one is the real love assassin. Ki Shuyi asked, Sister Shuyi, will Professor Yu also attend the CHIP conference this weekend? She replied, as a strategic consultant for Guan Capital, he will definitely attend such events. Kishio immediately sent a WeChat message to Guanji, asking him to take her to the CHIP conference. Shan Shan called Guanji and said, the company is sending me to the CHIP conference in Fukin. Can you give me a ride? Guanji apologized, saying he couldn't give her a ride. Disappointed, she hung up the phone. Chen Shuyi is conducting an interview at Yi Yang's company. Yi Yang comments that she looks even more beautiful today. She politely responds, Thank you for your compliment, Mr. Yi. She then asks, Mr. Yi, you've had a successful career abroad, why did you decide to return to China? He answers, I can't get used to foreign food. She looks at him in surprise. He continues, No matter how good foreign cuisine is, it can't compare to the taste I'm accustomed to. She says, That's a very Mr. Yi like answer. Yi Yang says, I chose Black Horse as the name of my company because I believe Bruce and I will successfully lead the chip industry. Currently, there is no competition for us domestically. I didn't poach Bruce, we were classmates when I studied abroad, sharing the same ideals. So, our collaboration this time is a natural fit. She remarks, the confidence you exude gives off a strong sense of trust. He replies, confidence comes from competence, and with confidence, there are limitless possibilities. Guanji waits by the car with a disheartened expression. Kishio walks up with her suitcase and excitedly calls out, Guanji. Seeing his appearance, she asks, what's wrong? Why do you look so weary? He replies, it's all because of you little master. While Chen Shuyi is packing her luggage, she receives a call from Xi'an, who informs her that Fan, the driver, is already waiting downstairs. She walks out of the building with her suitcase, and her ex-boyfriend stops her, asking if she has a new boyfriend. She responds, is it any of your business? He says, it's not my concern, but I advise you not to date a married man. She replies, do you think I share the same preferences as the one in your family? Sorry to disappoint you. Chen Shuyi asks Yu Xin Zhou to step aside, saying the car is waiting for her. After seeing the license plate, he asks, you. She replies, he is my boyfriend. What's it to you? Do you still want to intervene? He quickly steps aside. The driver in the car tells her, Mr. Shi arrived in Fukin around noon and specifically instructed me to pick you up and bring you over. Shein calls her to ask if she's on the car. She responds that she's already in the car. He tells her to rest well during the journey and that he'll see her in the evening. Yu Yu receives a message from Kishio on WeChat while packing, asking, Professor Yu, have you set off for Fukin? She receives his reply, How do you know about my schedule? She responds, Sister Shi mentioned that this chip conference is crucial, and you're sure to attend. He replies, I'm leaving right away. She says, take care on the way. Guanji asks her who she's chatting with that makes her so happy. She responds, have you already moved on from heartbreak? So gossipy. He says, men nowadays are cunning. 
I'm afraid you might be taken advantage of. If you have any questions, you must ask me. I definitely understand men better than you do. She says, okay, I have a friend who likes A, but A is into the type of B. My friend can't transform into B's type in the short term. What do you think my friend should do to make A like her? He says, hey, little girl, you're starting off with such a complicated love triangle. She asks, can you answer or not? He says, the guy you like doesn't seem like a good person. She emphasizes, it's not me, it's my friend. Guanji says, okay, okay, it's your friend. If your friend has already told A that she likes him, and A still says he likes B, isn't that emotional manipulation? Even if your friend manages to pursue him, there will still be someone else in A's heart. Trust me, don't pursue this guy. She angrily says, you don't understand anything. I've already said it's my friend, not me. He says, okay, it's your friend. Xi'an walks into the restaurant, and Ye Yang approaches to greet him, introducing himself and extending his hand. Xi'an also reaches out, shaking hands with him. Chen Shuyi arrives at the hotel, enters the room, observes it, and says, there's no taking advantage of the situation, they've booked a room just for me. It's indeed very Xi'an. She sends a WeChat message to him, saying, I've arrived at the hotel. Where are you? Xi'an is having drinks with Yi Yang and a large group of people, toasting. Someone says, Mr. Xi and Mr. Yi are indeed fated. Mr. Yi's partner, Bruce, was once paid a hefty sum by Mr. Xi to serve as a technical consultant for Lean. Now, the two of you can sit at the same table for a meal. Truly admire both of your magnanimity and foresight. Cheers to them. Chen Shuyi is alone in her room, looking at her phone. She mutters to herself, why hasn't he replied yet? She then sends him another WeChat message, saying, I'm still not having dinner yet. At the dinner table, Xi'an listens to them talking about him and Yi Yang, mentioning that both have ambitious goals and would not covet a mere technical personnel. Xi'an says, there's no conflict between Mr. Yi and me. The competition between Lean and Black Horse is healthy, and I welcome it. As for Bruce, he has his own thoughts, and I respect his choices. Yi Yang adds, the fact that both Mr. Shi and I appreciate Bruce indicates some alignment in our visions. The competition between Black Horse and Lean is beneficial for continuous improvement. As for Black Horse and Yun Chuang, who knows, there might be opportunities for collaboration in the future. Yi Yang approaches Xi'an and says, I've read your interview in the financial sector. Xi'an responds, that piece was indeed well written. Yi Yang adds, forgive my frankness, Mr. Xi, you are outstanding, but Lin lacks a truly excellent leader. Qin Kang's personality is a bit indecisive. Xi'an asks, so what? He answers, so, with Black Horse's recent technological breakthrough, it's inevitable for us to dominate the domestic millimeter wave high ground. Xi'an raises his glass and says, cheers to Black Horse. Chen Shuyi sends another WeChat message to Xi'an, saying, some people are enjoying a lavish feast, while others are feeling hungry and empty. Xi'an sees her WeChat message he replies, I am busy at the moment. He stands up and says to everyone, sorry, something came up. I have to take my leave. Xi'an calls Chen Shuyi while in the car, asking what she's doing. She replies, I'm living carefreely. He asks again, what are you up to? She says, I've been carefree for a while now. Xi'an becomes alert. Chen Shuyi is ordering barbecue at a stall. Several men notice her and approach, trying to engage her and urging her to join them for drinks. The barbecue chef hands her the food, telling her to go home quickly. One of the men grabs her and doesn't let her leave. Xi'an arrives, grabs the man, and takes her away. Back at the hotel, Chen Shuyi pulls away from Xi'an's grasp and asks, What are you doing? Xi'an questions her, Why did you go out alone so late at night? She replies, I went out to buy food. You called me to Fukin, then left me alone. I sent you a WeChat, waited for half an hour, and you replied with just two words, I'm busy. Suddenly, you show up, pull me away without saying a word. Can't I even go out to buy food? In the elevator, Xi'an asks, do you need to dress so nicely to buy food? 
She replies, is there a problem with that? Do you have to control everything? He says, do you not know how attractive you are? She teasingly asks him, so, did I attract you? He grabs her hand and kisses her. Jen Shuyi keeps walking, and he calls out, you've passed your room. She turns back to enter her room. He asks her, what are you doing? She replies, I'm thinking about things. Did you kiss me in the elevator just now? Can you do it again? I didn't feel it just now, so do it again. He takes the key from her hand, opens the door, pushes her into the room, and says, rest early. She stops him from closing the door and asks, really don't want to do it again.